First, let's start with a quick introduction of fencing. And the interest in this unique sport seems to be growing. Three different types of weapons or blades are used. The F.A., which is very stiff, the foil, which is more flexible, and the saber, which is sharp. In F.A. and foil, touching the opponent five times on the trunk of the body with your blade ends the bout. Fencing may not look it, but is very physically demanding. The Cattle Magnet Squad has been working very hard preparing for the Nationals, and many expect to do well facing some of the top junior fencers in America. There should be about 150 people in my category, 17 and under. My goal is to definitely come top half, and if possible, come top 20. And you know, I'm going to try to win, but uh, it's going to be hard competition up there. So some of you are probably asking, how can that cute kid ever become the head coach of Columbia Fencing? <laughs> and others might be saying, hey, coach, what the heck happened to all your hair? Well, it all started back in high school for me with this great group of guys. We just love the sport of fencing, and we called ourselves the Untouchables. However, though, we actually got touched a lot because, you see, we were in Shreveport, Louisiana, no high-level fencing coaches, no high-level fencing, and in our sport, height matters. The national champion that year, 6'7", me, 5'7". But we acted like sponges, trying to get as much information as we can. We bought the Olympic videotapes. We went to fencing camps. And we did everything that we can do to get better. But the main thing that really helped us was paying attention to details and being open to new ideas. We actually surprised a lot of people and got pretty good. So after my high school senior year, I packed my bags from Louisiana, and I moved up to New York to attend New York University because the best fencers are actually here in New York and I wanted to be on Wall Street. Well, this is about as close to Wall Street as I got. You can see me here opening up the NASDAQ market. This was back in 1999, when the internet was just starting to get popular. And just like my high school fencing team, we paid attention to details and were open to new ideas. Do you want to hear the new idea that we had? You ready? Online fundraising. Yeah. Back in 1999, online fundraising accounted for $200 million, and we thought that was a lot. Today, 15 years later, $22 billion. So after a pretty successful software career and not a bad competitive fencing career, well, that brings us to three years ago. I was hired to my dream job, head coach of Columbia Fencing. But unlike the historic Columbia teams of the past, the team that I inherited, 2 and 16. So just so you understand what I was going up against, all the other head coaches from all the other universities, they have fencing coaching degrees. They also have a lot of college coaching experience. Not me. It was tough. <laughs> so I went back, and I looked at my fencing, and I looked at my business experience, and I was going to do what I was always going to do paying attention to details, and being open to new ideas. So one of these new ideas focuses around recruiting. Now, whether you're in business or in sports, everyone has the idea of what that ultimate recruit looks like. And in the case of fencing, it looks like this person over here to your right, Columbia sophomore Brian Rowe. He has the athletic ability of an elite boxer, the flexibility of an Olympic gymnast, and the mind of a master chess player and he was on top of the national point rankings. But sometimes that recruit might not be so evident, especially when we're looking at the national point rankings. Now, in fencing, in order to win a match, you need to score touches. How many touches did you count? Well, if you were keeping up with it, you would have counted 15 points. And at the national level, fencers need to score 15 points to win a match. But in college, you only need to score five points. The national point ranking is all based off these 15-point matches. And if we look at the national rankings from a year ago, all the head coaches, they would go straight up to the top to recruit that number one fencer. And I don't blame them, because even though this is based off of 15-point matches, that number one fencer could fence a really good five-point match as well. But I was looking at someone 
that wasn't recruited. The gentleman that was down here on 32nd, his name is Drew Johnson, high school New Jersey kid. And the reason why I was looking at Drew is because there's actually preliminary rounds of five-point matches before you get to these 15-point matches. So the data that I was looking at looks like this right here. And if we take a look at Drew, you will see he won all of his matches. The V stands for victory. Five stands for five points. And it looked like this on all the data I was looking for Drew. He actually had a 93% win percentage in five-point matches. So ultimately what I'm saying is Drew was beating people, all the field out there, 93% of that field in five-point matches, yet in 15-point matches, he was ranked 32nd. Well, the good news is Drew came to Columbia. You see the Johnson, that's Drew right there. And he had a magnificent season, winning 58 bouts, finishing fifth in our region. A lot of coaches were out there like, who is this guy? That's, that's my hidden gem, right? <laughs> But recruiting is only half the battle. How can we take these great five-point fencers and make them even better? So that next opportunity, deliberate focused practice. And I take the model from our pilots. They use simulators to simulate the most stressful moments. Might be flying in bad turbulence. Maybe the landing gear doesn't come down. Or maybe a bird flies into the engine. You might remember this flight called the Miracle on the Hudson. All 155 passengers survived thanks to the preparation of Captain Sullenberger, who logged in thousands and thousands of hours. So what are those stressful moments in fencing? We call them the one-point matches. The matches that are tied at 4-4 and that next point wins to make it a 5-4 match. Are you feeling it yet? The odds of you being in an airplane accident, one in 350,000. That's not dying. The odds of you dying, one in 10 million. But the odds to be in a one-point match in fencing, one in four. And I know there's not too many fencers out there. So just so you understand the stress of what it looks like, let me show you what it looks like when someone wins one of these matches. Looks like this. <laughs> Columbia sophomore Jake Hoyle just had a nice 5-4 win over an opponent from Penn State. But sometimes that next touch, it's not going to depend on whether you're going to win. It's whether the entire team is going to win. And it looks like this. <laughs> Columbia sophomore Margaret Liu just had a nice 5-4 win over an opponent from Notre Dame. And if you want to know what the reaction from a coach, you see me in the background <laughs> right there. So beyond the hundreds and hundreds of hours that our athletes are uh, preparing every year, we wanted to take this, just like the airline pilots, and make a simulation. We came up with this drill called the one-minute, one-touch drill. Now realize, our athletes, these are serious college athletes. And when pride's on a line, their adrenaline's going to get going. And they would fight each other very hard in practice. But sometimes, back to the pilot idea, we wanted to make it, we wanted to make it a little bit harder. So we added penalties. If you lose a one-point match, 100 push-ups. Lose it twice, 200 push-ups. Lose it again, you see where we're getting at here, right? <laughs> well, <clears throat> sometimes actually in practice, people got pretty stressed out. I might see a mask being thrown across my face. People would be screaming. and. Sometimes it was a mess, but I'd much rather it happen in practice, having my athletes stretch out, than when we're at the Ivy League championships, down three matches to Harvard. We're the fencers in the Blue Sox. All three of those matches, one-point matches, 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, five, four. And I'm going to tell you, when those last two matches were going on and the, and the score was 4-4, four, four, I couldn't watch. <laughs> I went over, I found a chair, shut my eyes, folded my arms, and I prayed. 
And it wasn't until I heard the screams of, I didn't know what team it was, and I heard the screams, and I opened my eyes, saw Columbia jumping up and down. I'm like, yes, we won. Well, we've come a long way. When you take a look at the 2013 year, when we lost to Harvard, our one-point wins, 38%. This year, when we beat them, 64%. That was the edge. We've come a long way. I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> From the team that was 2-16 and 16 to this year, 27-3, and three, voted number one by the college polls. <laughs> And we're not done yet. This week, I'm going over the data. We have a lot of great kids coming in next year, and we're searching for titles. But the, the truth is, for me, it's, it's more than the titles. It's more than the wins. It's about the moments. Right after this historic win against Harvard, one of my athletes came to my office, and he said, Coach, all the guys we were talking, and none of us are married, and we don't have any children, but that was the best moment of our lives. Paying attention to these small details brought big moments to our fencing team. And speaking of moments, remember Drew? Well, after being part of our program for one full year, better coaching, better fencers, and our deliberate focused practice, if you look at the point standings from three weeks ago, Drew moved from 32nd to 4th. Drew also fenced the number one fencer in the world, and he won. Can you guess the score? Thank you.